Well, hello, hello. This is Cindy, your host at Ask Cindy Connector Live. Make sure that you follow me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And of course, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. So a really quick plug for StreamYard. If you are a small to medium-sized business, you could actually have a video podcast just like this one. Simply go to StreamYard.com. So a little bit about me and the show. I am a travel agent and a client retention specialist, and I started Ask Cindy Connector Live about three years ago, and I was sharing all my friends' special events or anything that they were doing to get their information out to the masses. And we are now at Ask Cindy Connector Live. We're, we're a live video podcast on Facebook and YouTube. So today I have the pleasure, the pleasure of meeting Marlo Anderson here on my stream. So really quickly, I want to tell you some of my favorite national days, National Bikini Day, International Surfing Day, Random Acts of Kindness Week, Random Acts of Kindness Day, Beer Day, Send a Card to a Friend Day, Blonde Brownie Day, Gratitude Month, which is in November, Travel Agent Day, Skip the Straw Day, of course, Bacon Day, Lobster Day, and Taco Day. So today I have the founder of National Day Calendar. His name is Marlo Anderson. He's been featured on TED Talk, ABC Nightly, and Las Vegas Morning Blend. Morning Blend. Oh, Marlo, tell us all about your story. How did you get started? Let's do this. Well, okay. Well, thanks, Cindy. First of all, it's great to be here. Thank I apologize. We're, we're experimenting with some lighting in the studio here. I'm not really sure if I like the lighting. We might change it, brighten it up a little bit. I have a new ring light behind here that I'm just, you know, not enough hair left on my head, right? So I got this shine off of it all the time. That's the problem. <laughs> So anyway, so oh, I love it. Calendar, uh, it's been around for a little over eight years, started with National Popcorn Day, couldn't find mm -hmm. out where to find information on that national day, thought, you know, it'd be interesting to maybe start finding, you know, where these days came from, started blogging about them. And, you know, here we are late eight years later, it's now the biggest trending topic of all time, uh, followed by countless numbers of people on on uh it's it's cross platform meaning that we're traditional media as well as social media uh i'm sure you turn on the radio or tv in the morning you'll hear what national day it is you'll oh, hop yeah. on social media you'll see the national days you know you'll see puppy pictures all day long on national puppy day and news stories about it and um it's pretty amazing some days we have a reach of over a billion people it's just absolutely wow incredible. and of course we have our amazing ambassadors like Cindy, oh, and you are amazing, you. by the way. Thank uh, you. It's amazing that you're you're with us, and and uh, uh, and you send me gifts, <laughs> so I love you for that. You send me food, <laughs> like I'm starving up here or something. But nothing better than that. Yes. Yeah. Well, National Brownie Day. Tell us yeah. about National Brownie Day. Well, um, I think you sent me uh, for Blonde Brownie Day, actually. Blonde Brownie Day, yes. Yeah, yeah. So there's actually a difference, as you know. Uh, blonde, blonde brownies have been around a lot longer than regular brownies because they didn't have the chocolate part, uh, you know, in the earlier days. I'm trying to remember how that story goes now. And, you know, there's only 1,500 national days. I should know every one of them, right? But, but it's <laughs> something about the way that the recipe... Uh, was developed and uh, blonde brownies aren't as popular as brownie regular brownies are nowadays, but they are so delicious. Oh my god, very delicious! Yep. And well, National Day calendar has been absolutely amazing in my life. And what I started doing because with my travel business, I just started sharing all this food stuff, especially for Lobster Day. I, I promote that and also promote. Um, Norwegian Cruise Lines and Carnival Cruise Lines because I love their lobster there. And I actually used to be a chef on Norwegian Cruise Lines. So just Amazing. so many great ways. And I also have a client retention business. So it gives me a reason to send people cards and gifts so I could send them popcorn, any kind of brownies, and anything throughout the year. I'm, I'm looking at my calendar. And then today is actually banana bread day. So tell yeah. us about that. Well, what's what's there to tell? Uh, it's delicious, right? 
It is actually one of my favorite foods. I love uh, banana bread, and banana bread wasn't even po- or wasn't even possible until about 1934. I think it was. Wow. Baking soda became a thing, and uh, that's what uh, kind of started the whole thing uh, with a lot of quick breads, including and bananas became very very popular because people uh, during during the world wars wouldn't throw away anything, you know, fruit, whatever. So if it got a little overripe, people were trying to figure out ways on, on how to use those. And somebody had the idea to make bread out of it one time. And of course, it's been around ever since. Yeah. Well, one thing I want to say is National Taco Day. So this is a really crazy story. I don't know if you remember me posting it last year. So there's this area in LA, it's called Alvera Street. And it's kind of like, it's almost like you're in Mexico. It's a street that has all these vendors, great restaurants. So we go into this restaurant and on the wall, it says founded October 14, 1915. I'm like, no way. What are the chances that we're here on National Taco Day and this very restaurant was founded on that very day? I'm like, what are the chances of that? That's pretty amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. I'm sure, you know, it's amazing the stories and I, I, I can, you know, last night it was Margarita Day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I went out to a local Mexican uh, place and uh, with a friend and get there about six o'clock and it's a Monday night. I wouldn't expect the place to be busy and there's an hour wait. So I'm waiting and my friend's running late anyway. So it worked out just fine. Get there, get, get seated. And then it occurs to me, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Cause I, I know better, but during COVID times, you just don't see this. Right. And, uh, Sure enough, this place is busy because it's National Margarita Day. Everybody had margaritas on their table last night. It was so I went around visiting with people. Of course, a few people recognized me and took some photos and stuff. So had a nice time. It's been a year since I was able to go out and actually do that, Mm -hmm. and uh, had such an amazing time last night. So I'm really looking forward, as you are, I'm sure too, going out and being an ambassador for National Days. And uh, getting out and representing and having fun with people as they're as you're out and about and as they're out celebrating, yeah. So let's talk about what may possibly be having be happening in Las Vegas coming here in October. Yeah, so in uh, we're looking at the potential uh, what we call a Celebration Nation Summit, and we're just starting to work out the details, Cindy. I know you're. This is actually a scoop here because we haven't let this be known to anybody. Uh, outside of my our office, except for you. So, um, yeah, so October 1st to the 4th, which is uh, a Friday through Monday, we'll have mm-hmm. some type of reception on a Friday evening, and then a summit type of scenario Saturday and Sunday. And then on Monday, we want to go out and celebrate the national days that are out and about. So it's also National Golf Day, uh, National Vodka Day, National Taco oh. Day. Those three are all on the same day, right? So we're trying to figure out, you know, do we do some type of, of golfing event? Uh, maybe have some distillery that uh, maybe do some vodka sampling um, and then also have uh, some taco trucks and that type of thing uh, so we can experience all three national days in the same place. So that's what kind of what we're thinking. Okay. The, the summit will be, we'll have wonderful people like you, hopefully, that will be speaking to how to celebrate, uh, what it means for your business, uh, maybe what it means as a lifestyle choice. You know, you don't have to be miserable all the time. I mean, you can choose this lifestyle and choose to look forward uh, it, to life as opposed to worrying about what happened in the past or worrying about what's coming up towards you. A lot of things you can't mm-hmm. control in life, right? But you can control exactly. your attitude and you can choose to celebrate every day. And, and that's what we choose to do. So one of the things that is very near and dear to me is uh, nonprofits. Um, So I I donate my time to a couple of nonprofits here in Southern California. One in particular is the Surfriders Foundation of Huntington Beach, Seal Beach. Um, And this Friday, tell us what this Friday is that's really near and dear to my heart. So you're putting me on the spot since I'm working on next week's stuff. Now, what... Let's see. Today is banana bread. Tomorrow is what is on Friday. I'm sorry. Skip the straw day. Can you oh, open yeah. up Skip your website straw. and let's look at that right now? So Skip the Straw Day has a very special story to it. Yes. 
and I'm I'm gonna get there and and uh, show it here. That is there. We go. I love this story, by the way. Nice. Okay. So skip the straw day. This was started by a group of kids in a classroom about I think three or four years ago in 2017. Okay. Students wow. at Whitehall Middle School in Whitehall, Michigan, along with their advisor, Susan Tate, founded National Skip to Straw Day in 2017 to encourage Americans to give up the straw habit, which for me was actually very easy because I don't use a straw anyway. Um, in this. So this group of kids petitioned us uh, through their school to start this national day. And what I love about this story is that this is the story behind the story. So they take this to a, they were involved in some type of contest uh, about the environment and they submit what they had done to this board or whatever it was that they were approved to have a new national day. They won $50,000. Oh, wow. For their impact uh, on on the nation because of Skip the Straw Day. So uh, it was pretty cool to hear that after the fact that uh, they've made that big of a difference. And this is something that these students will remember all the way through their lives now, the impact that they've had on this. Yeah, it's very cool. You were, um, I just noticed that you you have an interview or have done an interview with somebody on a beach. Tell me about that. Oh, the one I did yesterday. So who was this that you were interviewing? Oh, actually, yesterday I was getting interviewed on the beach. I was getting you interviewed were the by one. I just see the, video. the audio was, was silent. I didn't see what were here, what was going on. So, yes. So what were they interviewing you about? Uh, actually, how I got started in gratitude. Okay. And you just and... have to be up there talking about straws. Well, so I did a couple different things. So, so yesterday I got interviewed um, right before I met my friend Casey Fockler. Um, he is one of the um, key players in the Surfriders Foundation of Huntington Beach Seal Beach, and um, so we did a video talking about Friday because Friday I'm actually going to go to the Huntington Beach Pier and I'm going to do a little solo cleanup. So right now with the uh, Surfriders Foundation, we can't do our normal larger events like we've done in the past because of COVID. So we do what's called solo cleanups. Get it? You can get like two to eight friends and and do a solo cleanup. So to honor uh, this amazing day on Friday, um, we're gonna clean up the beach and make a difference. Wow! How long have you been doing that? I've been with Surfrider. I actually joined Surfriders as one of the co volunteer coordinators last year, but I've been going to their events probably for about three or four years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And we should probably throw out there, too, that uh, uh, for the summit, when we have all those details arranged, you're going to be the person that people can go to to, you know, make their travel arrangements or whatever for going to Las Vegas for that. So pretty excited about that, too, Cindy. Oh, thank you so much. I, yeah. I appreciate it. And, yeah. and it's just so weird how I got involved in being an ambassador. I, I was just sharing, sharing, sharing. And then uh, one of your coworkers said that there's a way that I could be an ambassador. I'm like, what is an ambassador? I'm already sharing it. This is great. So tell me. What is the ambassador celebration all about? So it is a group of select individuals um, that can that that we either recognize, like yourself, um, that are doing things around the national days, uh, or other people who submit an application and tell us why celebration is important to them. So it's just a select group of individuals across the country uh, that. Uh, you know, through whatever means, uh, celebrate. Of course, we like that you use national days around that, but that's not, uh, you know, the number one requirement. It really is about attitude and, uh, allowing people the ability to, you know, celebrate the days with you, whatever it may be. So let me look through the calendar. Let me see some other ones okay. we can talk about. We have about five minutes. Okay. So we have, that's what you get. Oh, right. there we go. I'm talk um, for it. The 26th is pistachio day. I've actually sent out a couple of greeting cards. And when my company has these little mini pistachio packets, okay. tell us all about pistachio day. 
Well, of course. I mean, it 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 is my favorite. Uh, not that's for sure. Um, oh, good to know. Yeah, and did you know that the shells can be used for a variety of different things? So there's a million and a half pounds of. <laughs> You need to have me on a trivia team, obviously. There's a million and a half pounds of pistachios that are that are harvested each year. They're light. That really surprised me when I heard that that they're that that it's not more. You know, I thought it would be more than that. But that mm -hmm. also, uh, um, and I, I'm sorry, it's three hundred million pounds. Oh wow! Pistachios. Yeah. Um, but when you think about that in the world scenario, um, it's not really that many. And when you think about um you know the price of pistachios there there's a reason for that because there's only so many that can be grown every year so um yeah but on the on the shells they actually make great kindling so if you're out uh camping or whatever remember that save up your pistachio shells for that they also are great for the bottom of potted plants for draining oh really wow yeah. And oh. and you know, probably the coolest thing I thought uh, shells from uh, salted pistachios can be put around like your uh, plants outside or whatever because they detour or deter slugs and snails from you know invading your your garden space. So I think that yeah. those are some really cool things that you can do with those shells. So don't throw them away. Actually, use them. That's pretty cool. So another thing that's very near and dear to my heart is airplanes okay so tell us about the uh so there's an aviation day and aviation week is that in october i can't remember the exact day for that so aviation day i guess i'm going to do a little looking up here now that is by far my favorite really and it obviously you enjoy traveling mm -hmm. i actually was just at the uss midway museum um, a couple weekends ago and i was talking to a friend of mine on instagram and he's actually going to get me an interview with the F-14 pilot from back oh my in the goodness. day. Yeah, that is like so on my bucket list to interview someone like that. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. You have it open here? There you go. So, oh, so very cool. week is week of uh, August 19th. Oh, it's August. Okay. Yes. August. Yes. Okay. And, you know, as we're wandering down here, too, one of the cool things about uh, National Day Calendar, too, is that we have a classroom. So anybody who's a teacher or maybe homeschooling or what have you, go to our classroom section. Uh, Michelle is, she's our lead writer and she's okay. spearheaded this project probably about three to four years ago. So many cool activities in there. So it's just something that I really liked and it's all free. All of our classroom stuff is free. Oh, wow. Yep. So Aviation Week, the week of August 19th. Love that image right there right there by the way that's cool that's um awesome. yeah let me see a few other ones so i don't know if you know this but the president and vice president never fly together oh really yes yes and you should actually drink water so this is interesting too and i just learned this myself you 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 lose about two cups of water from your body for every hour you spend flying what? So it's very, I, it's something to do with the pressure. So mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, very important to actually hydrate while you're flying. Wow. So there you go. That is awesome. And a lot um, of people don't because, you you know, a lot of people, and I, I, I fall into this. I don't want to, want to run to the bathroom all the time on an airplane, you know. So, but it is important to hydrate while you're on a plane. So, so what are your favorite days? I know there's so many of them. Do you have there are a lot, uh, <laughs> but you know, of of the traditional national days that were there when we first started, it is Popcorn Day. I mean, I, I am a big fan of popcorn and and celebrate that. My new uh, of the new national days, it is Astronaut Day. Uh, I'm a oh. I'm a geek and a, I'm a space geek, and I uh, and of course having the honor to meet many astronauts since we oh, since we no way. astronaut day four years ago now um was there at the space symposium to do that we had about 20 astronauts around me while we were doing that um it was a big honor in my life to do that yeah, yeah. we should plan that when um is that coming up or what month is that it is and it's an easy day to remember 
because we tend to celebrate it anyway. It's Cinco de Mayo Day, so May 5th. What? National Astronaut Day. Yeah. Yeah. No way. So wow. easy to remember. So, so who did you get a chance to meet during that summit? Um, so a lot. <laughs> you have to put me on the spot here now. Um, wow. It's terrible. I, I meet so many people nowadays that I, there's, a uh, um, well, Michelle Lucas, she's a, a very dear friend of mine now. Uh, we do a lot of things together. Um, there is Dr. Leroy Chow. He is the, um, longest or the, the astronaut that served the most in space. So he's been on the space station a few times in, in very long missions. What's the, what I found interesting about that, though, Cindy, is that most people who become astronauts didn't aspire to become astronauts. So yeah. now, and especially nowadays, you just have to be good in what you do. So Dr. Leroy Chow had no plan to become an astronaut. He's just a very good general pack practitioner. And of course, yeah. important to have a doctor on board long flights. So that's how he became that. But it was interesting talking to people from NASA about, you know, kids who want to, you know, maybe get into becoming an astronaut. You don't have to go there through the traditional means. Become good at what you are. You know, you, you might be great using a 3D printer, for example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that skill set, that's going to be huge as we move forward because they're going to be making parts on the go uh, in the future. So I'm just throwing that out at you. It's just cool stuff. Now, getting back to Vegas really quickly. Yes. So let me go through some bucket list stuff that um, definitely we need to do. We have the the Ferris wheel. So if you've been to Vegas before. Um, have you been on that Ferris wheel, the, the happy hour Ferris wheel? The high uh, roller? The link. Yeah. Um, I haven't been on the wheel itself, but I, I just actually just came back from um, Harrah's. I was, was just, just, okay. right, yeah, just right there. So, yeah. 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 So that's one. And um, we got the Neon Museum, which is uh, the old um, Las yeah. Vegas sign. Yes. Um, there is the Mob Museum. Yes. This is one of my favorites. Bacon Bar. I've never been to the Bacon Bar. Where is that located? It is off Rancho. So it's probably about 20, 25 minutes from the strip, but it's well okay. worth it. It's literally, you, you ought to go there for a BLT day. It's literally the best BLT. And of course, the United States Thunderbird Museum is Very one cool. of my favorites. Yes. Um, there's all kinds of different stuff. There's a, where you could drive a, like a Ferrari for a couple hours. I mean, there's uh, Yamasuchi. Y A M A is amazing. It's all you can eat sushi. It's right on the strip. Um, it's absolutely a must. Uh, and then the best burger in town, like if we did like a National Burger Day thing, uh, is at Planet Hollywood at Ocean One. Okay, very yeah, nice. No shortage of stuff to do in Las Vegas. Oh no, no, there is not. So there what is. are the restrictions right now? I've actually haven't been there in a, quite a while, probably six or eight months. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean masks are required you still have yeah. to attempt to social distance you know yeah. that, that six foot rule while you're standing in line or whatever but the the town is coming back alive mm -hmm. so I, I get down there at least once a month so okay. one of the one of the things that we're hoping to do is uh, we record the national day radio short in las vegas so what? our plan is yes. So our plan, this is news to you as well, but um, our plan is to bring the ambassadors over to the studio and hopefully, um, I'll, you know, have our studios participate or have our ambassadors participate in the recording of a few episodes. So I'm four hours away. Good enough. Four hours away. You may have to spend an extra day or two just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a couple minutes before we close out the show. Is there anything you'd like to add about National Day Calendar? You'd like to plug some of your colleagues for all the great work they do there at the home office? Well, of course. Um, you know, there's uh, um, Amy and Alice. I'm sure you've gotten to know both of them pretty well. Oh, yes. Uh, They're so amazing. Yep. Uh, Chris, of course. Uh, she's the lead for the ambassador program. Uh, she's amazing. There's uh, Michelle. She's our lead writer. Anybody who ever wants to, you know, submit things, you know, National Day Calendar is a living document, which, by the way, is getting a total revamp. Uh, so in about four months, it's going to be totally different. We have a lot of cool things or a lot of cool features coming out. 
Uh, so yeah, all, all of those people, Doug, Doug handles our social media stuff. Bowls oh, are, I love um, Doug. He's amazing. Doug's amazing. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, and then I have, I actually have kind of a cool announcement if we got enough time for it. Oh yeah. Let's go over, go for it. <laughs> so, so do you, do you watch the Super Bowl? Of course. Okay. Did you see my bacon mac and cheese I posted? Oh yes, <laughs> I did. I did see that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So as you know, the day after Super Bowl is the day nobody wants to go to work, you know, and, and, and every day. You, yeah. And, and it is one of those days that people call in sick to work. If you live on the East coast, it's even worse because not, I mean, like next year now, it'll probably be one or two o'clock in the morning before the game gets over on the East coast. So, yeah. so football hangover day, right? So that was brought up by Katie Nolan on ESPN uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned something at the end of the broadcast that really had me thinking. So I've been working on this kind of in the background and we are going to start this process of moving. We're going to attempt to move president's day, which is the week following to the day after the super bowl. So you truly have a holiday, a federal holiday that, that people can take off after the super bowl. And it just moves it back a week, which actually gets it closer to, to Washington's and Lincoln's birthday anyway, because mm -hmm. that's the reason that it was originally started was actually for Washington's birthday. Uh, so we are just setting up on the website right now, a petition process. Uh, we plan to get 15 million signatures on this. So, and our ambassadors are going to be a big help. So expect a lot of stuff coming from us. Uh, but we, we think people will get behind this. Uh, because it is one of those days. I remember being in work the day after the Super Bowl, and I, I actually asked somebody like two in the afternoon if our phones were actually working because it was such a quiet day. Uh, nobody is working. Even if they're at work, they're not working. So, yeah. Wow. So anything else you want to add that everyone needs to be a part of our ambassador program? Employee? Our ambassador program, um, our our. Uh, education program. I think we talked about that a little bit already. Am I forgetting something that you can think of? Mm, let's talk about swag. I think that's very oh, important. Swag, of course. Yeah. I know you show it off all the time. Woo -hoo. All yeah. Right. And I've been giving a lot of these earrings out. Yeah. So the earrings, earrings are crazy popular. Um, I was again at Margarita Day last night and I uh, had a, had the beanie on. I don't normally wear a beanie, but my one hair was going crazy. So I had the, <laughs> and it settled out. Uh, so I had it on and then I put it in my booth and I come back a little bit later. Somebody stole the Celebrate Every Day beanie. <laughs> like you got to be on them. You know what? I think it's fabulous. If, if, they, think yeah. it's, if it, they think it's worthy to be stolen, I feel that there's value to that. So, yeah. I thought it was great. So yeah, we have a lot of great swag coming out. We have bags now. Um, like I said, the the earrings, I can't get over how popular they are. Everybody seems to like the earrings, but not me. I mean, I think they're cute, but you're not going to see me wear one. I'm just telling you. But the pins, we have pins, of course, lapel pin. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be expanding on our apparel line this year. We're, we're going to be coming out with some tin signs as well. Uh, oh, okay. and those will be fun because they will be, um, you know, the, the cutesy old time type of images, right? So it'll say something like national coffee day, September 29th, and it'll look like somebody had scratched off the September 29th and then hand, handwritten behind it will be every day. Oh, and wow. Okay. And we're going to do that in a, in a series of shirts because the challenge with a lot of these national days is they're one-off things and who's. Who really, outside of maybe you and I, is you know going to wear a shirt uh, for one day of the year, right? So, but you're you're a coffee fan, or or you're a popcorn fan, or whatever. Mm -hmm. This gives you the opportunity to actually wear that and show the world that you celebrate this every day, you know, which I think will be fun. Uh, when is Bacon Day? Bacon Day is December thirtieth. Oh, so that's the same month as National Brownie Day, then? It is, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. And and I'll have to look because I have my uh, annual um, 
excursion and just over the top um, Cabo bucket list vacation where we get, we go to the black and blue or we're there during the black and blue. Are you familiar with the black and blue? I'm not outside yeah, of, it's actually uh, one of the largest fishing tournaments on the planet. Oh. And just all these big marlins that the guys um, catch and huge prizes and all these amazing yachts. And there's so many great things to do. So I'll have to find out it's the, 18th through 25th of October. So hopefully okay. um, there's something going on while I'm there. Yes. I think when we went last year, um, it was like National Food Week or something like that in October. I think it is. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, on the 23rd, there is um, our talk show host day. So there you go. Really? Yeah. It's on, live. The 23rd is Johnny Carson's birthday. Yeah. And uh, so I'm actually, when I started podcasting a couple of years ago, um, it was with Bucket List Coach Web Show Live. And um, because of everything going on with COVID, that's kind of been on hiatus. Would you be willing to come on that show next month for the launch? We'd love to have you. Can you can you get some of your colleagues on with you? Oh, I, th I think they'd be more than happy. In fact, you might even want to see them other than me. That would be fantastic. So That would be awesome. Yeah, yep. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else? And then I'll close out the broadcast. I apologize for being so long-winded. You give me a microphone. I'm going to talk forever. Thank you, Sydney. Not, not a problem. I'm going to put you in the green room and let me close out and I'll see you yep. there in a minute. Well, there you go, guys. Make sure that you follow National Day Calendar. Make a difference. Make those five phone calls every single day. And... Go to nationaldaycalendar.com slash follow dash us and make every single day amazing. Celebrate every day. And we'll see you at the three o'clock show. Woohoo!